Hey folks, Erzy here. Uh, yeah, I figured what the heck, I'll post something. It's been a while, it's been a long while. But in case you couldn't tell, yes, this is Kerbal Space Program. And I wanted to show off a ship that I had managed to build, so let's get into the game. Now, when you first get in here, this is what you're greeted with. You're greeted with a, a set of buildings you can build stuff in. Uh, this is the launch pad. This is the tracking station. It'll let you see any missions that are ongoing. Uh, over here, we have the vehicle assembly building. That's for uh, creating rockets, which are vertical launch rockets, which go off the launch pad. And this is the space plane hangar. So we're going to go to the space plane hangar because I have a single stage to orbit uh, aircraft that I want to show off. And what does a single stage to orbit uh, aircraft mean? That means one stage to orbit, nothing uh, nothing gets dropped off on this one, uh, nothing goes wrong with it. I have uh, labeled it the Boom 2 because it kept exploding on me when I uh, was doing a lot of testing. Uh, my staging is off. I'm going to have to fix that. Mm, the only thing I want on that last stage is just one thing, and that's the parachute. And the parachute is actually uh, here on the back. Uh, so that parachute is the emergency slow you down, or hey, I have got to the end of my mission, and I've just hit the runway. I have yet to land on the runway. Uh, I do have some RCS, which are scattered about on the wings. Some of them are on the underside. Uh, this is a single-man cockpit. I have the avionics package on the front. Uh, as you can see the landing gear underneath. Uh, I have two sets of uh, advanced canards on the front. A uh, little bit of RCS fuel, yeah. Uh, these are the vectoring rockets. These are the uh, LVT-45 ones. These are the vectoring ones. Uh, so they're not the strongest rockets out there. Uh, I have not really been able to get these larger fuel tanks to work. Uh, this is version 0 0.16, by the way. So, in case that matters. <laughs> so let's go for a let's go take this thing for a spin and get up into orbit, shall we? Save my changes so my new staging stays in place, and get out there on the one, on the that on the runway. <laughs> Come on. So let's see, we have today we have Shepser Kerman. Hello there, Shepser. So one of the first things you have to do when you're flying anything in Kerbal Space Program, if you don't want to completely lose control, is you have to turn on your SAS. Now fortunately I have a uh, I have a joystick. So that makes this a lot easier. And I'm going to uh, I haven't even turned on the rockets, by the way, and I'm just rolling. The game does that to you. <laughs> so, start the first stage. We got our rockets going. Throttle up. And once I get up to speed here, uh, careful I don't run off the runway to the left. Once I get up to speed here, I'm going to have to uh, actually turn off the SAS. In order to whoa, that's enough. That's enough. Ah, uh, there we go. I have to turn off the SAS in order to uh, start the climbing maneuver. I want to keep this thing on 90 degrees. And just try to angle it up a little bit more. Throw down just slightly. Don't want to throw down all the way. Uh, one of the issues that you have in Kerbal Space Program is there's the problem of drag. Every single part that is on the spacecraft generates drag. Uh, and because every single part that's on the craft generates drag, each one of these wings, each one of these uh, rocket motors, the cabin, all this stuff generates drag. Because all this generates drag, uh, when you're deep down in the lower Earth, lower Kerbin, lower Kerbin atmosphere, yeah, I think that's right, 
um, you get lots of drag, and this is your atmosphere meter. So as long as I'm deep, as long as I'm low, low to the ground, I don't want to throttle up all the way. Uh, I just want to go easy on the throttle, and I just want to climb. I don't even want to climb straight up. I just want to climb kind of gently, take some advantage of the fact that I've got wings on this thing. And drop that back down to 60 degrees. There we go. Uh, this is the nav ball. I'm using this to tell what my attitude is. That's about a 60 degree attitude right there. Uh, so using this, I can use this for a lot of navigation. I'm not really using the uh, joyce the uh, mouse all that much other than to pan the camera around. There's the space center behind us. Uh, Shepser seems happy. That's nice. Okay, we're climbing past 10,000. That's very good. Bring it back down to 60. Let's not get ahead of ourselves there, Shepser. We will be in space soon enough. And these rocket motors, even though I've tuned them down a bit, still go through fuel pretty fast. I have gone through two sets of tanks. I have four. So I'm halfway through my fuel, and all I've done is get up a little bit. Let's go to the map. Uh, going to the map, I can see uh, where I am. This is all debris from earlier attempts and what have you. Uh, see the apoapsis is 24,000, 25,000, and that's an important stat. Bring the nose down, bring the nose down. I'm trying to build up horizontal velocity at this point, so I'm going to start wanting to bring the nose down more and more as I go. Matter of fact, let's bring it down to 45. The uh, SAS is fighting me, by the way, which is why the movements are so gentle and slow. And we just crossed into uh, what the game terms orbit. Uh, as far as what the altimeter is concerned, so we just flipped there. And our apoapsis is now about 75k. I want to get to about 80k. Bring this up and cut the engines. Yeah, that'll get us above 80,000. Uh, we are still losing a little bit of uh, altitude to air resistance because the air is still resisting us, but once you're above 70,000, you are out of the atmosphere. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the SAS off and I'm going to make some adjustments. I actually want to, uh, oop, a little too far, a little too far. Turn the RCS on. Turn the SAS back on. And nose that down just slightly. Okay. We're about on the horizon now. In about 40 seconds or so, we'll get up to Apoapsis. And then we'll be able to do our uh, our orbital entry burn. Except there remains happy. That's good. We still have one full set of fuel tanks. We're going to burn just about three quarters of a fuel tank to a full fuel tank. That'll get us into orbit. Uh, watch that. Okay, now is a good time to fire those engines back up, and this time I'm going to go all the way up to my throttle. Because I'm not in atmosphere anymore, there's no drag. No atmosphere to have a drag with. Keep that on the horizon. I'm actually fighting the apoapsis as I go. 
just keeping the apoapsis going. Watch the other side of the planet. There's our Perry. Whoa! <laughs> so, let's see now. We got an apoapsis of 97,000 and a periapsis of 80,000. That's almost circular. Hey, I timed that pretty well. It's only a 17,000 meter difference. 17 kilometer difference. Not bad. Not bad at all. So, uh, now that we are officially in orbit, yeah, it's single stage to orbit. Take a uh, look back here at my fuel status. Uh, yeah, I was about right. It's about one full tank of fuel to do the orbital burn. And I did this all with the gear down, which doesn't need to be down anyway, so let's get that off. I feel silly. A real space plane, you'd pull the gear up almost as soon as you get in, get get up off the runway, uh, for drag reasons. But as far as I know, that doesn't have much an effect, uh, much of an effect on the game. So there's the sun. Yay, sun. Uh, there's the planet Kerbin directly below us. And we're going to fly over it uh, pretty constantly. Plenty of RCS fuel. Only a little bit of fuel left, though, for the main engines, which are on the back, which means that basically I can just, just barely get up to uh, orbit and barely get myself back down. Uh, so, anyway. Let's do a, a couple of orbits, shall we? Up here we have a, uh, a warp speed, uh, and this is the total mission time. Right now we're just crossing eight minutes. That's not really that bad. There's also keyboard shortcuts for speeding it up. Uh, the fastest I can go right now is 50 times speed, so this is simulated 50x. And if I go back in, I can see the planet Kerbin flies underneath me at an accelerated rate. There's a little bit of frame rate drop because I'm going so, so fast. Uh, much smoother if I zoom out, I think. Ooh, Ooh, look at that frame rate. Oh, that frame rate's horrible. Um, let's get back up here. <laughs> oh, that's much better on a frame rate. Wee. Ooh. Okay, anyway, what we're trying to do now is we're going to want to try to land back at uh, Kerbal Space Center. And in order to land back at Kerbal Space Center, we're going to have to uh, do a deorbit burn. Now, in order to do a deorbit burn, we have to find the, uh, on the nav ball here, we're going to have to find the uh, backwards. Or we can look at our attitude and look at the ground and see that we are indeed almost facing directly backwards right now. Which is good. So I can just make a little bit of an adjustment. Hit the RCS while I've got it. And using this I can now come back out because I made an orbit or two. And I'm going to try to now deorbit burn back to Kerbin. I have never yet landed successfully over a KSC, and I would like to. So I think a Kerbin periapsis, periapsis of about 29,000. Uh, that should be good, because actually... Yeah, I don't want that too deep in the atmosphere, uh, because there's a mountain range right here. I don't know if you can see it, and I have to kind of dodge that uh, if I want to land back at KSC. So that's about where I'm going to have to sit. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm tempted to try to get a little bit more. Let me see if I can use the RCS for a little bit of a boost. Uh, come on, RCS. Oh, I'm getting below. I'm getting off the uh, off the mark here on the nav ball. <laughs> Oop, 
Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. Easy. 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 Okay. Check periapsis. Let's try to push that periapsis up. I'm doing this with just the RCS. I'm not running the main engines right now. I've got the RCS fuel. I might as well burn it. Push that a little bit above 30k and call it a day. Uh, that should get me relatively high in the Kerbal Kerbin atmosphere. I actually might want to see if I can push up a little higher because atmospheric resistance is going to slow me down. And I want to be able to uh, make some fine adjustments. I'm going to have to burn up all the rest of my fuel pretty much making those adjustments. Okay, come on. Okay. Oh. Come on, SAS. There we go. Yay, I think I got about there. I can gain a little bit more altitude. I think I'll stop at about 35,000. About 10 minutes away. And while we're up here, we might as well do a little bit of stuff for fun <laughs> before we hit the atmosphere. Hmm. Am I out of RCS fuel? I am indeed. Well, what do you know? No more RCS. Okay, well. Turn the RCS off, turn the SAS off, and we're going to go free drift here for a second. Shepser, congratulations. You are now going to be outside your craft here while there is no atmosphere. Uh, but yes, I know that the uh, the ground is coming, Shepser. So we're can't, we can't stay out here forever. But we can certainly look down upon the planet Kerbin, which you are from, and we can enjoy the view. Now we have slid down a little bit. So I have to climb back a little bit and then hit the F key to board again. Once we cross 70,000, we'll be back inside the atmosphere, so I need to watch where I'm going. Uh, right now I am over this ocean, heading towards land, and I think the land is coming that way, yes, okay. Now since I don't have the, uh, I'm just going to turn the SAS off here, just use the reaction wheel feature of it to right the ship. About there. Okay. Okay. Light turn. Okay. Tip the nose back down a little bit there. I want to get back down to a reasonable attitude. We're going to face our direction of travel here, pretty much. Okay. All right, Shepser. We got the aircraft oriented, or the spacecraft, I should say, oriented. Uh, let's take a look back here and see what our periapsis is. It is still 33 kilometers. We are still a long way from uh, getting all the way in. This is a long, shallow, shallow orbit right now. Uh, we still have an apoapsis way out here, by the way. So it's going to take a while to burn out all that energy that's in our apoapsis, and it's going to take a while to uh, before that periapsis starts dropping. 
hopefully uh, I can work with this so that I can get back down and land. One space plane. <laughs> uh, make some more adjustments. I'm doing this, by the way, with just the nav ball, folks. Uh, just watch the nav ball, and you'll see me making adjustments. Oop, oop, oop. Turn it back, turn it back. Right the ship. Okay. Down, down, down. Okay. Now, as we get deeper in the atmosphere, that drag that I mentioned earlier is going to uh, have more and more of an effect. And eventually, the drag will become so much that the drag will drag us right back down into the depths of the atmosphere, and we will uh, take a nice, soft-ish landing back on Kerbin. There's only one minor problem with this. There's only one small flaw with this ship that I've got. This is the uh, Boom 2. Yeah. Uh, one small problem with this uh, concept, and you can see I'm, I'm losing altitude now. I can correct for that, but I'm not trying to correct for that right yet. Uh, I have a little bit of fuel in the tanks. I just want to keep it above 30,000 right now. Hmm. Right now my altitude is 49,000, and I want to keep the peri right now a little bit above 30. Because once you go below 30, you, uh, you really start dropping into the atmosphere kind of fast. Anyway, as I was saying, I have one little problem with this ship, and that this ship does not glide all that well. Um, it, I don't want to say it handles like a coked up squirrel, uh, but it is not entirely stable. 